as you can imagine, being featured in a host of box office hits has done wonders for our profile with tourists. Problem is, a lot of the people who come are just here to take a few photos, dump a heap of rubbish and then leave unceremoniously. So we end up with messes like this one. I'd like to say that we've become the victim of our own success, but that's letting me off the hook. Right, there should be a standover on the other end of the beach with rubbish bags and a picker. We went to all the trouble of installing these and they still couldn't be bothered. Looks like they had quite the little feast. These kids would have nightmares if you showed them some of what I've seen out here. Birds with stomachs so full of plastic they can't eat. Hmm. South Island University. I knew it. Way too many people around here who have never respected this place. There, you can leave them over by the stand. You made quick work of it. That's a perfectly usable tent. No sense wasting it. Anyway, I've had enough of this. And we need to ensure that we're attracting the right kinds of tourists, not just day trippers from Christchurch out on their school holidays. It's okay for people to come here and leave no trace, but it'd be better if we could rely on them to help us with our conservation goals. So hunters seem like the natural target audience. Our deer and goat populations need constant culling. And you better believe I have more faith in people who love the wilderness to respect the place than kids up to no good. At the risk of sounding like an old fusspot. <laughs> Speaking of... Let's do what we came to do and grab that photo. Lovely use of lighting. I may have to hire you to help out on my next book project, if I ever finish the current one. There's a lot of theories about where these boulders came from. Volcanic activity, lightning, even aliens. I've heard them all over the years. The boffins will tell you they were formed over 60 million years ago on the sea floor, like pearls. But that's not the whole story. When people first arrived in New Zealand, they took their staple crop with them, kumara, otherwise known as sweet potato. Unfortunately for them, the weather in this part of the country isn't exactly conducive to growing much, and the tubers withered and died. So they sent word to the Polynesian homeland and a canoe set sail with a hardier crop. But it was caught in an intense storm just off the east coast. Each wave that struck it was so large that it made a new hill. Those are the ones you'll see further inland and all of the cargo went overboard. And that's what these boulders are. Petrified kumara, eel baskets, calabashes. The canoe itself formed the reef further up. Moral of the story? Things have long shelf lives. A lesson I wish someone had taught those kids. Right, feeling warmed up? Good. It's time for you to show me what you can do.